it's important to understand what the 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. We're told on the IEEE beam forming document that this technology cooked your eyes like eggs in World War II. And you all need to understand these are military weapons. These are assault frequencies. If you garner nothing more than that, that's what you need to know. It's microwave radiation warfare, is what this is. You're going to feel it, whether it's from satellite or whether it's from cell towers, whether it's from aircraft, whether it's from a truck, whether it's from a, a, a stationary base. You know, the main thing is that if you are in that field, then you're going to feel it. So, you know, it's the same thing as, a, it's basically the same as a cell phone. Because it doesn't make a difference where you are in the country. If I call your cell phone, it's going to ring. Right. Okay, well, this is the same exact thing. Once I have your bio-coded uh, information about your bio-code, I just transmit that off all the towers in the United States, and you're harassed no matter where you are. There's a bioresonance to every individual, just like our fingerprint. Every person has an individual DNA, a different bioresonance. And so uh, the Stockland, the original Stockland patent is on my website where Stockland was able to go voice the skull with pulse tra uh, transmissions in 92. And then after the, the rest of the development went black ops. We don't really know what happened after that. We knew we could put voices in indivi uh, to, uh, group people's heads. What they did, and I know from the Russian trans translation, from Cheryl Welch, from reading all her translated psychotronic stuff from Russia, that they figured out how to biocode these microwaves so that it can attack specific individuals. Once they have your DNA, they take the DNA and they put the, your DNA code in a supercomputer. And in that supercomputer, they run algorithms that biocode electromagnetic transmission so they bioresonate with your body. Once they've done that, they can transmit that from satellites or cell towers or aircraft or any number of ways, and that signal will only affect you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with all, yeah, like I said, the cell phone towers and everything else as well. Well, the towers are the Matrix, you know, they, you know the movie The Matrix? As an example, if I go into a city location and I'm testing an environment, I can see probably anywhere from 30 to 60 ac Wi-Fi access points. So that means that you're saturated microwave. That's all 2.4 gigahertz, you know, microwave transmissions with 60 trans 60 transmission access points that are sending and receiving. The Human Genome Project was carried out at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, where I was a staff scientist for five years. They were tracking people in the lab by the electromagnetic frequency emitted by individual DNA. The DNA in every living thing has a unique frequency and signal. That is what they're using what they're focusing on and what they're weaponizing to completely control us. All they need is to, to kind of identify your DNA fingerprint like <laughs> uh, uh, with your name and then they can, they can watch you 24 hours a day. This is one part, the other part So we are, is... we are running a GPS system? Yes. The way the technology works, the voice of skull, is to tap into the resonant frequency of the DNA of the individual the targeted individual. And this allows total mind, spirit, and body control over the individual by those who are running this program. Since I saw on a daily basis how intimately involved in this program of voice to skull social engineering and gang stalking my private security company was, I couldn't help but notice that our clients one of the largest corporations in America and indeed the world just happened to have a massive database of DNA on its property. A DNA database that stores the DNA of millions of Americans. Their emotions, their thoughts, their minds, their heartbeat, their muscle movements, 
their dreams, their thoughts. Everything they see and everything they hear is all recorded and manipulated by this technology. And all of this is made possible by the people running this program, utilizing the technology to tap into the resonant frequency of the individual's DNA. So they can broadcast this from a, a satellite, uh, a tower, over a, a many, many miles. And yet only that particular person, the targeted individual with that particular physiological signature or DNA signature will actually pick up the sent, the sent message, correct? That is correct. The, the digital receiver is the human brain. Okay, so you could be standing in a room full of 100 people. The stream of energy, the stream of electromagnetic... It's everyone, electromagnetic. but you're the only one who gets it. That's what I was saying, yeah. It, okay. would, it, would hit, it would pass right through and around everyone, and they would not even sense anything. But the victim would absorb the energy and feel its effects. Because only the victim possesses that specific brainwave signature, sure. which the sure. stream of energy is tuned into. The supercomputer begins to monitor all electromagnetic activity of the victim's brain by way of this bidirectional stream of energy mm -hmm. and it begins to monitor and download all that in that information back into its database the system the, the supercomputers are designed to clone to download one's entire persona and psyche back into its database because of my responsibilities in surveillance as a otherwise normal security specialist uh, i would show this technology at work and it was through the perspective, of course, of the camera and what I was told that it was obvious it was being uh, used through the eyes of the targets. Um, so I have seen it and it is absolutely remarkable. It's just like a first person, you know, video game or something where you, you see right through the eyes of the individual. When we look through our eyes, there are photons hitting the outside of our face. They don't actually make it into the part that thinks. The part that thinks is looking at something else. It's looking at some kind of weird compressed signal. Basically, those optical signals are, are interpreted by the brain, and then you, you perceive them as vision. You perceive them as pictures and so forth, but this is all uh, electrical signals within the brain. Uh, and so the exact same thing, the data is taken in through the eyes, and then your brain renders it in a visual form that you, we know as sight. The exact same thing happens with the computer. Uh, the data is sent to the computer, then it is rendered uh, in the form of a picture that people can look at. Images, like vi natural images, like what I'm looking at, have so much structure that they can be shrunk and compressed into a very tiny, what AI people call representation. So what our brains seem to do is build a very, very good compressed representation of the world, call it a model. So just like if I have a building and there's like a blueprint or a scale model of the building, imagine I have the whole world and all of its concepts and I shrink it down into this weird compressed representation so that it fits inside my brain. The exact same thing happens with the computer. Uh, the data is sent to the computer and then it is rendered. And from what I understand, that's where this technology is right now. The cutting edge is trying to marry, you know, the software that's used to render it on the computer and the actual uh, detecting of the signal and the hacking of the signal within the human mind. So the, the, the modern view of intelligence, or, a, or call it cognition more generally, is that it's a very important thing that we create models of the world inside our heads. They're using two interfaces, like we said, the brain-to-computer interface. That's the supercomputer, the sophisticated and advanced exascale system downloads all of your, you know, all electromagnetic activity, all these synaptic responses, the electromagnetic emissions of the victim's brain is downloaded at speed of light. Energy travels at speed of light, so they can download, upload at speed of light. Sure. Back into a database as they build, as the supercomputer is programmed to build, uh, using various software programs, a cognitive model of your brain. And what we are trying to do is to use this precious knowledge to build machines they can actually create, manipulate, and use these parallel realities in the service of this one. We want to grab those parallel realities from this abstract space in which they live and crunch them down into this chip. Uh, to eventually achieve direct behavioral control over you. And then based on you know that cognitive model being complete, to, to be, begin to be able to predict and influence in advance the reference choices of the victim during thought composition. As the victim is formulating his thoughts and preparing to act, 
supercomputer already has that persona inside you, all your emotional state downloaded, uh, every vector of your emotional state downloaded, so I can already predict and influence mm -hmm. those events in sure. your life in advance sure. and achieve direct behavioral control over you. And they had created a digital model of Earth and everybody in it down to a digital GPS coordinates model up to even a vertical dimension of one and a half centimeters, every building, every roadway, everything. And what they want to do is create an Internet of Things where in digital space they know exactly what you're doing in real time. They want to know in real time what shows you're watching, what sandwich you're eating, what part of the house you're walking around. They want to know everything. Where they are literally just seeing what it's like for someone to eat a sandwich, what it's like uh, the emotional response and the, and the brain activity when someone is insulted, when someone uh, gets love, when someone interacts with someone, all of these different aspects of the human ex experience, so that my original thought was that they are using it to be able to program the technology itself. Robots the smartest people. Artificial intelligence, AI. The idea is to port the software from the human brain. So what you've heard about AI is not what we mean by AI. What we mean by AI is a software system that can do literally anything that a human can do. Literally anything. In fact, the very nature of the research and development program that is going on in Seattle, Washington, and I think uh, by extension what's being done to TIs around the country, is very... Um, is very largely geared towards the monitoring of human beings for the specific purpose of recording every aspect of human existence to monitor our thoughts, to monitor our emotions and our feelings, to inform computer software that is used on robots, that is used on computers themselves to make them as, as human-like as possible. And obviously computers are better at things than people in lots of different ways so now imagine not only can they do everything that a human can do but they can do everything that the best human at any task could do better than them in 2003 they launched what's called the ai system mm -hmm. which is a, a intelligent supercomputer with the intelligence of a human being mm -hmm. in other words an, a smart human being yeah. but able to think 10 trillion times faster yeah with the access to all known knowledge and history and a complete access to the, to the internet and all of the communication pathways. If in fact the uh, algorithms that are now believed to underpin certain aspects of cognition uh, can be run on a quantum computer, the kinds of life or kinds of species that you'll get from that will be qualitatively better. What you might get is a sentience which is fundamentally different and better in the sense that they'll learn things faster, they'll have deeper insights, they'll be able to predict future into the future uh, farther, they'll be able to take actions that have um, uh, access to understanding that we don't. That's in a sense what I'm talking about, is that if you could build an intelligence that had a deeper ability to uh, speculate about the outcome of its actions, you might be able to get something that was qualitatively smarter, you might say, if you wanted to, it's hard to define intelligence, but qualitatively better to predict the future uh, more, more effectively than, a, than any human biological brain could do. So you're dealing with a system of remote neural networks. That's what's targeting you, okay? Remote neural networks, okay, with a will, intellect, and emotion of their own. The, the system, the RM supercomputer that's targeting you, okay, that uses one of these three relay stations, the mm -hmm. tower, satellite, or mobile platform, it mm -hmm. actually locks on your emotional state. Mm -hmm. Once the cognitive model, this generic model is, is built, it begins to lock on to your emotional state, okay? And then it begins to, um, it begins to, not just to monitor, but to manipulate that emotional state. They need to map out all seven vectors of the emotional state of the victim in order to create this cognitive model, this, this reverse engineered will, intellect, and emotion. That's your human soul, by the way, okay? The human soul is the will, intellect, and emotion of the victim. They figured out what to do with the human body. The five senses, they can pretty much achieve whatever they want mm -hmm. by manipulation of the human anatomy with these with, with this mind control technology. Now they're going after the soul, the will, intellect, and emotion. I could build, I think, a soul. Here's how I would do it. I copy you exactly into a digital environment. Everything about you. Imagine that was possible. It probably is. So if I copy you into a machine, that copy process has all of the properties we were talking about as, as being a soul. First of all, it's immaterial, because copying, that's not a thing, it's a process. It's immortal. 
It's just like you. You can put it in any environment you want, heaven, hell, make a simulation. So uh, all of these things that reside in our heads, these abstract concepts, I think that eventually we can build them and we have to decide what we want to build. They are building false realities into which they want to induct you so they can play God.